bring that up because I share with my clients all the time. They, they sometimes they feel like, well, I don't want to beg for stuff. I don't want, I don't want people to feel put out. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to feel like I'm coming after them to get something. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let me ask you something. When you do something for someone else, does it make you feel good? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if it makes you feel good. Don't you think it makes everybody else feel good too? Mm -hmm. So when you actually don't beg for help, but offer to give them the opportunity yep. to be of service, you are helping them by giving them the opportunity to help. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, it seems like a no brainer. It really, really does. Um, I run an Easter egg party for, an Easter egg hunt for the Department of Children and Family out of Lawrence, Massachusetts. And I, I'll throw a post on Facebook. I need 2,000 eggs, seven tablecloths, 100 paper plates, 100 cups, um, whatever. You know, we come up with a list. I post the list. Anybody who wants to sign up for something, sign up. And I'll get somebody who signs up and says, I'll get five cases of water. I'll, I'll stuff 200 eggs. I, you know, when you told me about that, I'm like, I want to know about that because yeah. this past Easter, my daughter's 20 mm -hmm. and all her growing up, you know, it was fun to go do the baskets, do the Easter egg hunt. This year, she was, she's too old for that, but yeah. I got a, um, a laundry basket and I filled it up with all this kind of stuff, she, <laughs> cleaning products, candles, yeah. fun stuff for her yeah. house. So now this is a new tradition yeah. of an Easter egg basket like that. Yeah. But I wanted to do an Easter egg hunt. I thought, well, I don't really have anybody to hide the eggs for and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's so much fun. I would it, love to participate. It, well, you know what? And it is fun. And I can't tell you the number of people who call me because I've done it for a few years now who are calling me going, um, we're, we're signing up for 200 eggs. I haven't even put the post out yet. And they're going, you're signing me up for 200 eggs, right? I've got a day plan with my grandchildren and they're coming over and we're doing this and it's a great opportunity. Ooh. Really, really important for me is um, teaching and educating children now mm -hmm. about the importance of philanthropic work mm -hmm. and philanthropic networking. For children, they have no, there's no end goal. They have no product to sell. I think it's just important to teach them that now that even if you do have a product to sell at the end, and, and my kids watch me do it all the time and uh, so many other kids. Uh, I know a phenomenal, phenomenal young lady um, Jessica Weller, and she started this incredible program. She's out of Wyndham, New Hampshire. It's called Kids in Service. I live in Wyndham. Yes, in yes, yeah. So Jessica is awesome. And Jessica comes up with events, activities, just different types of things that kids can do to, to help, to participate. Like, let's teach them young. She has a cute little newsletter. It's really cute. Look her up on Facebook, Kids in Service, New Hampshire. And um, when my daughter Michaela had made those homeless period bags, she sent her a wonderful letter. It was just a letter. It was a handwritten card, and, mm. it, and it said, great job. I'm highlighting you as a special kid in service. You're doing a great job. That positive reinforcement coming from a stranger built her self-confidence, mm -hmm. and the self-confidence is built on not materialistic things, not on her looks, not on how smart she is. It was built on her doing good. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think if we teach children that young and we encourage that young enough, then that sticks with them through for life. I, I know that it does because my daughter's 20 now. When she was younger, I would take her. We would go four or five years in a row on Thanksgiving. We went to the homeless shelter yeah. and we worked in the kitchen. And she was too young to be in the kitchen with the knives and everything. But they had a food pantry in Manchester. So she would go and help sort the, the cans. Yep. You know, they had thousands of corn and peas and whatever. Yep. And she's in there doing that. So I had her doing all that stuff with me. And about six months ago, we were riding the car together. And there was somebody homeless with a sign. And I never give money, but I've always got food in my car. I've got fruit cups. I've got granola bars yeah. for me, you know, fruit. Yeah. Just yesterday, I handed a guy a couple of uh, 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 oranges. So I said to her, I, I put my window down. I said, I never give him money, but I've always got food. I always give him a fruit cup. She goes, I know, Mom. I tell my friends all the time, <laughs> my mom keeps extra fruit and granola bars and get and she's being kind of, you know, snarky yes, about yeah, it. Sassy, yes. But how awesome yeah. that she knows that. Yeah. And that she tells people that. And that, once again, social proof. Other people, people want to be a part of something. Not only do they want to give and be a contribution. Human beings are very social creatures. We want to be a part of something yeah. bigger than ourselves. I, I think we have to be. I, I, I do. I think you have to be, and it's um, part of survival. I have a couple... Uh, 
I have an uh, like an aunt, like an in-law, and we were at a birthday party, and her two sisters were there, and they're two older women. And they looked at me and they said, wow, you, you really figured it out very young. And I said, what how? I'm just, I'm just winging it. I feel like I'm constantly just winging life and trying to, you know, just do and keep doing and doing. And they said, you know, that happiness comes from helping other people. Mm. And if you can figure that out at a young enough age, you're happy. Then you're happy with your life. Happiness is a choice. I, I truly believe you wake up every day and you have to say, I'm happy today. Okay, it's rain. Guess what, guys? It's been raining for 60 days now. We know it's raining. That's nice. I'm still happy. You happen to be on the Happiness Jungle TV show. Yes, you know. yes, I do know. <laughs> and our founder, Miss Lindy Eldridge, will love hearing this part from you yeah, because yeah. You know, that's that's what she that's what she preaches. Yeah. That's what she's all about. And when you said that they said, hey, you know, you've learned that happiness comes from helping other people. I know for myself, when I've been down, or if I'm just in a bad place, or you know, I always tell people the best way to 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 help get out of that is to go help somebody else. Yeah. Get out of your head. Not, you know, people say, you know, no matter how bad you have it, other people have it worse. And, yeah. you know, there's just so many reasons for giving back and helping. We do it actually with, we have a lot of, because our Comfort Home Care deals with mentally ill individuals, we have a number of depressed individuals. And, and depression is one of those things, um, severe depression, but we're seeing a lot of depression with older individuals now. Um, you know, they're home, they're alone, mm -hmm. they can't do anything. So one of the things my nurses will do, come on, it's time to get up. Let's go. Let's open some windows. Let's let let some fresh air in. Let's go for a walk. Let's do a, any kind of that stuff. And and Jessica with her kids in service does a whole program for elders where the kids go hang out. Just go hang out with an old person. Imagine that. Mm. It's such a novel concept. But well, think about all the wisdom that can be imparted. I used to date a guy who worked at a um, an assisted living. Yeah. And you know, just on a daily basis, when he was bathing them and dressing them and all that, the conversations they would have. He just there were so many things that he knew that the average person wouldn't know. That just the conversation, how how yeah. wise they are. And and he would say, uh, you know, so and so passed away today. And and he would say, you know, what that person really shared with me was, you know. People don't regret what they've what they've done. They regret what they didn't do. Yeah. 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 And he talked to just hundreds of people in their 80s and 90s and hundreds mm -hmm. that would share that same kind of message. Don't wait. Don't hold back. Don't be afraid to tell her you love her. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask that guy on a date. Yeah. Like, whatever it is, go yeah. for it. So uh, if, if the one thing I could get, you know, the idea of network marketing, the one thing if I could say to anybody watching this program is go out. Figure out what you can do, how you can help, how you want to help, and just go do it. Like, just go. If you are passionate about animals, go, maybe you don't have the ability to foster a dog, but go to the dog fostering place and maybe you can be sharing their stuff on social media. Something as simple as sharing someone's stuff on social media and encouraging mm -hmm. other people or, um, you know, Foster a dog or go hang out with the dogs. Go go play with them for an hour. If you don't have money to give, give your time. And, and guess what? Playing with dogs is really fun. <laughs> then you also get to have a really good time, yeah. you know? So, um, and if you're passionate about old people, go to the senior center and say, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. They're constantly looking for volunteers for things. And you know what? If you're not that kind of person who's going to go sit with an old person, or play with a dog, but maybe you have a skill. You're a plumber, you're an electrician. Guess what? There are a lot of those people who need some help. There's a lot of older individuals who live on severely fixed incomes, who are stuck in their houses, who aren't going out anymore. Offer your services to help. Well, you change know, a, an outlet, fix, change a light bulb. I, you know, even you don't have to be an electrician to change a light bulb, but you know what I mean, go do it. Use your talents to help other people. And doing that, you're going to promote yourself. Well, the whole campaign that I was telling you about, you know, neighbors in need, to, be, to have a real estate person, a plumber, all these different people in real estate to put out to the world, hey, you know, here in our Haverhill or Manchester or Jacksonville or wherever you are, yeah. let people know you want to help 100 people with little things like mm -hmm. that. Got that outlet that hasn't worked in 10 years? You take $2.00 and 30 minutes and you yeah. fix it and it changes their life, you know? Yeah. So there's so many ways you can help and while you're out, and you talk about it on social media. 
you know, let people know, let yeah. them be inspired to go do something else. And that's especially business. because maybe you don't have the $30 or $50 to buy them a new light fixture fan, but there could be somebody else out there who does have the 30 or $40 and is willing to give that to, to help an old person's have a new light fixture fan, but don't have the ability to go change it, you know, mm -hmm. partner up, partner up with these people and, and funding. There's a lot of people out there who want to give money and don't have the ability to give time or the talent that you might have. So utilize you, look inside you and, and what can you do and then just go do it. And call me if you can't figure it out or you're looking for, I cannot tell you the number of people who reach out to me on a weekly basis looking for saying, I want to give to veterans. I want to give to this. I, I, my passion is kids. What can I do? Absolutely. Let's get you paired up. Let's mm. get you paired up with somebody. So what do you think what happened in your life that made you so philanthropic? I have no idea. I am very, very, very blessed. I live a very nice life. Um, I've come from a very strong, stable home. My parents are phenomenal. My father's company did well. Um, you know, I never missed a champagne brunch. And there's a lot of people out there. Um, when I was doing my PhD work, I spent a lot of time abroad. You know, I, I was in Turkey, in eastern Turkey, um, where the Kurds are. And I'm, I'm not sure how familiar you are with, with that region of the world or everything that happens. But these are people who live on a mountain. Houses are built. They're like shacks. They go to the bathroom outside their door. It flows to the bottom of the hill. And in the spring, when it rains too much, they're literally surrounded by a moat of feces and can't leave. And they're just stuck, and their kids don't go to school, and they just live up there for like a few weeks in spring. And it's and it's these people are these people are poor, like real poor. Uh, there's and there's no services. That's not real services like that that are offered in the U.S. Those don't exist in the rest of the world. Mm. These are the people who really like starve to death. Mm. And when you see that, and you come home, and it's like, what am I doing? Well, you know. Um, my mom does this thing, what are you thankful for at Thanksgiving? Or, you know, you go around the table at someone's birthday, what's your favorite thing about this person or whatever. And, and when, I, when I think about what I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for clean water, mm. clean running water. That's 80% of the world literally doesn't have that. And we all take for granted, you know, we yeah. just turn a faucet on. And so what am I, what am I doing with my life? I, I've seen horrible places. What am I doing with my life? Mm. What, how am I getting into heaven? You know, what is it, you know, that's easier to get a camel through the eye of a needle? <laughs> How, what am I doing? Yeah. But, but the, and the more I started doing it, the more I realized I have a lot of fun doing it. I host a fishing trip for veterans, uh, for disabled and homeless veterans, and I round up my veteran friends who are not disabled to go and string up fishing lines and carry wheelchairs on the boat. And I, don't, I never go on the trip. It's... They go, it's mm. their thing, it's their jam. So they go and I see them off and when I come back at the end, they're all so happy and they tell me this was the best day of their life and mm. my friends who go donate their time say this was, this was so incredible to give back. These are veterans giving back to veterans, mm. saying, oh, yeah. saying, I came home with legs. I came home mentally in, in the right state of mind. What can I do? What can I do to help? So I love seeing people happy helping. I, my heart is full and that's, and that's a good thing. So I wish everyone else's heart could be as full as mine. Well, I wish everyone's heart was as full as yours, <laughs> too. You know, when I hear stories like uh, like Tony Robbins talks about when he was 9, 10 yep. years old, and, you know, the, the, the guy comes knocking at the door carrying the turkey and the food for Thanksgiving and, and how their family was so poor, and because of that is why he feeds how many million people mm -hmm. a year yeah. now at this point. Um, so, he, you know, there were stories in his history of, you know, really – being in need and so yeah. the fact that you weren't that you actually were raised you know very well um but but are able to see all the need in the world is just it's just so wonderful and and, yeah. and and you know getting out like you said getting out of the country and being able to come back and be so grateful i've often thought many times you know how they have this the scared straight the, where they bring yeah. some of the kids into the prison you know there's so many kids that are so entitled you know mm. when you talk about doing these things to get the kids out in, in philanthropy so many of them are so entitled, and they just don't know what it's like to need or want. I get it. As a parent, you don't want your kid to suffer. Mm. You don't ever want your kid to, to need or want. You, you don't. I, I understand that. 
but there's got there's got to be a balance. Mm -hmm. There has to be a balance, and, and you have to get to a point where you that learn it on your own. So that's why I say get it in as young as possible, as you know, that portion of it. Well, and and children really do. Uh, take in what we're doing oh, and the examples yeah. around them. So, mm -hmm. you know, normally when I have someone on, I ask them to uh, tell people what's a book that you would recommend or, or what's an affirmation or something, but you've already given so many oh. wonderful <laughs> tips <laughs> about what they can actually yeah, do. Yeah, so, anything. Just do anything. Um, a lot of church organizations, even if you're not a member of that church, are often doing food pantries and good things and, and just reach, reach out. If you have children, please look up Kids in Service. Um, even if you don't live in Jessica's area, copy what she's doing. Please, mm -hmm. please, mm -hmm. if you don't live in the New Hampshire area, take her model, copy it. I don't care if you copy her her newsletter, her words. She won't care either. It's the idea of, you know, getting them out there. So, so go what's, looking. what's next for Katie Cook? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> your, plate, your plates are so full. You're no. running your, your family's business. You're doing all this philanthropy. What's next for you? I don't know. That's a, been a... You ever thought about writing a book? Been a tasking. I'm a horrible writer. That's okay. Horrible. I, you know, let me fix oh. that. Not write a book, author a book. Maybe. That's different. I could do that. I was thinking about starting a podcast. Ooh, I could see that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're very chatty. You're very Very friendly, chatty. <laughs> very gregarious and outgoing. I could see yeah. that. What would it, what would the name of it be? I don't know. I don't know. I could see you doing I that. work with a networking group, uh, Next Generation Leaders of the Merrimack Valley, and it's a group that I really like to help promote. I like helping promote young people starting business. Mm. So something along that idea. I love those uh, the groups that you hear about that, that do the micro loans. You know, for 50 yes. bucks, you can yeah. help somebody in other countries start a whole business for mm -hmm. $50. So that's something to talk about. Well, Happiness Jungle TV show is so happy Thank to you. have Katie Cook on the show. You've been a blessing. It's been my honor to meet you, and I'm so glad that we are starting a relationship. I, seriously, it's been wonderful. Yeah. This has been wonderful. And, so. and to see what I appreciate else you guys having me. Happiness Jungle is, it fits perfect for me. It really does. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you for watching the Happiness Jungle TV show, where it's a jungle, but we try to keep <laughs> it happy. <laughs>